I am that I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Welcome to the new energy. Uh, not just a new year, but a new energy. We're going to explore that today. Such a delight to be here. Shocking for a moment to um, see you all like this, but let's take a deep breath together as we continue our work. Ah, yes. It was said that I was ready to come through before and knock out these slides. Mm. Actually, I was patiently waiting. Oh, Kaldra and all of you could feel me, ready to come in. But actually, we were – we, being those in the Crimson Council – were doing a little preparation work for today, helping to balance and adjust the energies, helping to get you in your bodies. Hmm. Many of you came here a bit floaty today, a bit out there. Oh, the energies are very, very intense right now, and it causes you to kind of go out of your body. It causes you actually to go into your mind a lot. But we spent this um, time with your slides helping to adjust some of the energy balances here. Helping to get ready for some of the work we're going to do today. Everybody ready? Yeah. Uh, indeed, this is the classroom of the new energy. Hmm. So, let's take a deep breath together. But we're going to we're going to move to the next song. It wasn't a mistake uh, actually in the um, <laughs> arrangement here. I wanted to save this next song for our time together. And as the master Mech. Master mentioned, imagine now, as we go into this next piece of music, imagine it is your self singing to you, your soul, your spirit, your inner being. As this piece of music plays, take a deep breath or two or three or keep breathing. Don't focus so much on the words here, but focus on the energies that We've actually embedded into this music, not, not uh, that you would get it when you download it, but we've actually embedded it yesterday and today. Let yourself go beyond the actual words into the feelings. Uh, don't try to translate anything in your mind. Don't try to guess what's being said, or uh, don't try to guess what your spirit is saying to you. Go for pure feelings, the voice of spirit rather than the voice of human. Go for the pure feeling. So, Maestro, let's play that song. Love grand, particularly when it's the love from yourself to you, between you and yourself, love is grand. So, what did you get from that, Tom? Father Roman told me not to listen. Ah, this is a wise man, because if he had told me I've got this incredible sensation of connection, I would have said wrong. Wise man. 
wrong. You didn't get anything because that would be the tendency of your humanness to try to put something around it, to try to make something of it, to define it in a very mental way. And where we're going together, you are going to discover yourself outside of your mind. Outside of your mind. No, it's not that there's anything wrong with the mind, but it's limiting. It's limiting. The mind doesn't understand true love. Oh, your mind tries to understand it and has written about it or tried to figure it out, but the mind is not programmed, is not capable of understanding something as simple as love. Mind can't. The mind, as I've said over and over, is a beautiful tool, but it is only a tool. It is not the beginning and the end. It is not the time right now to try to grow the mind. It is a time to open up the spirit, working in conjunction with the mind and the body and your past and your present and your future all together. We're going to discuss you're going to discover yourself outside of your mind. And it's an amazing thing, a bit frightening, a bit frightening because the mind loves to have order, make everything neat, make sense out of things, because when you believe that if there is sense that you're safe, but good Lord, not. Not. There is no safety in sense, mental sense. None at all. Haven't you found that out by now? It's only confusion, chaos, running in circles, chasing the rabbit down the hole, and frustration. So that's where we are. What a, what a joy to be on the um, Chambre stage with all of you, with Linda, with Andra and Ann, and all of those tuning in, because we really are delving into some new things. We'll get into that in just a moment, but back to music. I love music, good music. This was okay music. No. I love good music. I wish one of you would uh, assist Caldra and the staff in picking some truly classical music. I mean, some music that – I'm not talking Caldra about old music. He just interrupted me and said, you mean that old stuff you used to compose and listen to? No, I'm talking about music that – Harmon has harmony and resonance, and but anyway, music, no matter how good or how bad, actually has a beautiful way of being able to integrate into it a very feeling energy that it can take somebody beyond the mind. Those of you here who are musicians understand this basic principle: don't play music anymore, and not in the conventional sense of the notes and the scales and trying to make it into a, a three-minute composition so it goes well on the radio. Music, music flows, as you are discovering. Music is such a beautiful way to carry consciousness and feelings. Uh, art oh, – once been said that the world will be saved by art. I, I would include music in that. It's actually prob probably more appropriate today than it ever has been. The world will be saved by art and music and creativity, because these are the things that allow the, the real energies and consciousness to come forth. These are what allows this expansion into a new energy. So. So if you're involved in oh, art, art. There are some of the paintings um, by the old masters and even some of the, the new masters, and particularly some of the up-and-coming ones who haven't been discovered yet, who understand absolutely how to integrate energy, feelings, senses into a painting, so that while the eyes look at the, at the surface, of the painting, and it's these colors and in certain forms, there are underlying energies that are potent, very, very potent. If you look at some of the 
works of the old masters in particular. There, there were some who really understood how to infuse true uh, messages into paintings, not, not just what you saw in the lines of the art, but true messages in those paintings. And these messages endure today. Uh, messages endure. There are some beautiful paintings uh, in museums, and unfortunately far too many that are hidden in private collections, but we're done with that. We will not allow that anymore, Klaus. To have these paintings hidden away, to have them imprisoned, and the energy won't allow it. It's actually dangerous for those who are hiding old, valuable works of art away, because energy can't stand being confined. It likes being, it likes being put into a certain form for a while, and experiencing that form, Steve. But it, it can't. It hates being confined. Uh, that is why. That is why incarnations, uh, one lifetime after the other, other are so important. Because, you see, you tried one time to defy death, and it, it didn't work very well. It didn't work very well. And what happened was that you came to realize that your body needs to change its form. Your identity needs to change and expand, and to to want to stay in the same form all the time, in the same identity and expression, will cause you to explode, and you did. <laughs> but not from your own, own hand, but from somebody else's. Kaboom, you're out. Uh, you've come back. You look fine. You look, <laughs> considering what you've been through, you look fine. But music, art, books, uh, books, the voice, all of these. What we're going to get into it. You're going to understand how everything has been oh so limited, and how easy it is to jump to that next level. There are there are paintings uh, out there that, and music uh, and uh, creations that have infused so much true energy. And you're going to learn how to do that. Whatever it is you want to do, whether it's singing. Whether it's dancing, whether it's writing or speaking or whatever you want to do, you're not going to be doing it just from here anymore, Leslie. And you know, whether it's food, whether it's whether it's any type of therapy that you're working with others on. Oh, you get so caught up in the methods of the therapy. You say, "Well, somebody handed down this uh, this program." This uh, healing modality, and then you try to you try to mentally stick with it, point by point by point, and you test yourself on how well you can stick to the points, and you absolutely cut off your creativity. I do like coming to this side of the room, but Calder's a little nervous about the speaker. So the mind has. No creative abilities whatsoever. Whatsoever. You like to think it does. You like to think your creative endeavors come from the brain, but it doesn't. It doesn't. And some of you get so frustrated with, with your creativity, your ability to express your, your feelings, because you're still coming from up here. And in this new energy, we're going to go beyond that. I am so looking forward to doing it. So let's talk for a moment about, about what we talk about, about our messages. Our messages are old. They're ancient, as a matter of fact. There's not a thing here yet that is new. Everything Tobias said has been said before. Everything I've said has been said before. It's just said in a little bit different way, perhaps to get the attention, perhaps to make it a bit more contemporary, but it's all been said. The messages are ancient. The messengers are ancient. And you are the messengers. Indeed.
That's why you are sitting here. That's why you are listening in, because you are the messengers. Now, yes, theoretically everybody, everybody is a messenger, but some have a, have a lot better preparation and a far better chance of being the messenger. So in a way, yes, you are special. You have been the messengers since the beginning. Perhaps hard to accept? Say, who, me? Adamus isn't looking at me, but he is. You've been the messengers since the beginning, the early ones who went through the order of the ark, the entryway or the, the portal to come to earth to take on this form. You were wise enough to always carry the message within you. The message is simple. You are God also. Now act like it. <laughs> now the message can be said in many different ways. It can get very esoteric and very philosophical. Oh, philosophical F philosophy, it's another thing just from the mind. It lacks um, – man, it's so boring. La Have you ever had philosophy that was joyful? I haven't. I haven't studied a bit of it that was. Philosophy is mental, boring. It allows the mind to chase itself around and around and around and around, and then when it gets tired, it comes out with a new philosophy. <laughs> well, take a look at yourselves. How many, how many different uh, spiritual groups, esoteric uh, ventures, philosophical uh, endeavors have you taken on? Where have they gotten you? Well, to a good place right here, but, <laughs> but, but, ah, there's so much more. So, so dear Shambra, where, where were we? We were talking about, ah, I get so much into your feeling. So, you are the messengers, you always have been. You carry, uh, you could say, a bit different a particle of consciousness in you than a lot of other people. They have the potential to do so, but most of them don't for a variety of reasons. They don't want the responsibility of being the messengers, you know, because you know what happens to messengers. <laughs> <laughs> they get rich and famous. <laughs> and a lot of them don't feel that uh, well, that's not their sole passion. A lot of them don't want to take on the responsibility of, of being a messenger. But each and every one of you here, anyone who is touched by or, or feeling into this message, somehow or the other is a messenger. You've brought all of this information from times past to this moment right now. You've had lifetimes and lifetimes, Joyce, where you have shared the message in one form or the other, putting it into different words perhaps, um, putting it into um, sacred words, sacred ceremonies, but you have brought the message in the past. So you say to yourself, but the message is, is not really new. That's correct. That's correct. Because humans and, well, you haven't gotten it yet. You want, you want to – and that's not, a, that's not a criticism at all. You want to experience what it's like getting it. You also want to, as a messenger <laughs> – as a messenger, Calder was asking me the other day, why are there always sirens when you're talking, Adamas? <laughs> You shouldn't ask those questions, Calder, because look what you get. So part of you truly understands the message, and part of you has chosen not to fully get it, because you have wanted to come back time and time again on this planet to be the messengers, to be the messengers. But along the way, then, sometimes you forget that you were the messenger. It's, a, it's an interesting game. You forget. So what does is, what is a wise messenger do? Well, call in 
a few spooks to remind you <laughs> that you are the messengers into your DNA, Pete, in, deep into your DNA. Your DNA is different than in a lot of ways, but uh, to a lot of people outside of this group. doesn't make it better or worse. It just is. Because deep within your DNA is a passion or desire to be a messenger. Messengers, messengers constantly bring forth the reminder for all humans. A reminder, again, very, very simple. You come from the One. You are God also. You are always loved. There is no need to forgive. Uh, that's, that was a strange message that was brought in. There is no need to forgive or be forgiven. Uh, so old energy, it's, it's really about just acceptance and, and compassion. Another, another lecture I'll give. But So, dear ones, you are the messengers. You come from ancient times, all of you, all of you, one way or the other, to bring forth this message to Earth. Here's the dilemma. Here's why I bring this up. You're a bit confused right now. What is the message right now? Do we rehash the same message that we've given over and over since the times of Lemuria in Atlantis? message was the same. It was presented different, spoken a bit different. You say, say, do we just bring up the same message again? And, and part of you is so tired of that. Part of you says, but we've done this before. We've gone before groups. We've, we've, Adamas, we've written the books. We've created the churches. We tried to get the message across. And they're just not listening. That's partly right. Some of them aren't listening, but a lot of them are. And a lot of them need to hear it from, from you, Mary, believe it or not, from you. They, they need to hear it in your own words, with your own way. And that's why I'm talking about the voice. I'm talking about the expression, because they do need to hear it. Now, here's the difference. <clears throat> Dramatic pause while we take a drink. <laughs> the message from the ancient times is still the same, as it always has been. How many different ways can you say it, or, or sing it, or paint it? However, and part of the frustration that you have at a, at a deep level, it's not quite right. Doesn't feel it doesn't feel right to give that same message anymore, because something changed. Something's different. And you're absolutely correct. Therefore, for a lot of you, the reluctance to come forth with what you have to share. I'm not talking about – I'm not talking a big philosophical or religious message. The world's had enough of that. I'm talking about hard to describe, a message from your heart, a message of the I am, a message of um, a message of love of self. Put quite simply, love of self. So part of you is saying, but how it doesn't feel right to be a messenger anymore. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Mentally, here's what you do. Mentally you say, but I need to I need to lose weight. I need to quit smoking. I need to, I need to study more. I need to whatever it is. You have all these excuses. That's that is a mental process. What's really happening is a heart process. You know there's something different. And it's quite simple. It's new energy, because the message changes with new energy. It's not the same message anymore. Not the same message anymore. You need to hear something different from within yourself. Other people need to hear something different from you now. And this is what we're going to be talking about today and over the next few gatherings that we have. So take a deep breath and take a moment to feel within yourself, for you are the messengers.
You are. That's why you are here. You're going to be a bit perplexed. What, what does that mean? What am I supposed to be doing? Uh, if I was a messenger, how come, how come I haven't had a brilliant message to share with everyone? That's coming. Take a deep breath. One of the reasons why I've asked you in recent childs to get your voice back, your true voice, is because you're going to need it. It's not just your voice, it's your expression. Whether it is whether it is through art or music or writing or speaking, any creative endeavor that you have, you're going to need it. You're going to want it. And that's why I've been saying, bring back that voice. And it it seems like a contradiction, perhaps. One moment I'm saying, bring back that voice. Speak. From, from deep within, not from that little voice, not from the mind voice, but from deep within. Bring that voice back. But the next minute I say, don't use words when you talk to me. Is it a contradiction? Absolutely not, Edith. Absolutely not a contradiction. Let me explain. As you go without words in communicating with any of us, as you don't define it in English or German or Romanian, as you go beyond the need for words, this is where you are going to discover yourself outside of your mind. It's going to put you in touch with such a, a, a beautiful, true part of you. It defies explanation. You're going to learn how to really communicate with every part of you again. In doing so, you're going to come back to your true voice of your spirit. When you do that, when you, when you come back to your true inner voice, not the, not the sound voice, but the inner voice. It changes your physical voice. It changes the way that energies come up and through. You see, right now, when you speak, I say generally all from about here. When you speak, it's a mental process putting it into words. But when you speak from your spirit self, comes from here. It doesn't need to go here. And your mind's not going to be jealous. It's got enough other things to do. It doesn't need to come through here. It comes from here, and it comes straight out through your mouth, bypasses the mind. And, and again, that's the mind doesn't matter, but it bypasses the mind. So when a word comes out of your mouth, when a sentence or an entire story comes out of your mouth, it's no longer words. It's energy, it's feeling, it's consciousness, it's love, it's compassion. It is the I am coming and expressing through you. So no longer does it matter how eloquent the words are, how large your vocabulary is. It doesn't matter how you put words into sentences. It becomes a complete expression And the people who are around you suddenly start feeling something different from you. They're they're not put to sleep anymore when you talk. They're not they're not they're not engaged in what they're gonna say next. Because they're feeling you. They're not into a mental to mental communication as most human communications are right now. Suddenly, suddenly, Diane, there's a there's a whole different type of communication as we are doing right now. Oh, you're you're hearing the words, it's kind of it's kind of sinking in, but it's not the important thing anymore. Because there's something else very intimate in a beautiful way going on between you and I. It's being carried through the voice. 
uh, but it's also coming out through every every part of Calder's body, every part of me, to you. And therefore, it becomes very engaging, very compassionate, and it becomes soul to soul rather than mind to mind. And that's where we are going. I hope that makes sense. No, actually, I hope it doesn't make sense because <laughs> then perhaps we'll get it. So take a deep breath for. For you are, you have been the messengers. I'm going into an area of very new energy right now. Very new energy. Let me review a little bit of what we, what we spoke of in our last session. <laughs> so we talked about we talked about the basics. These are, are the basics. I'm gonna, going to ask you here, uh, pay attention, of course, but let every part of you pay attention. Don't, don't, just, don't try to dissect this just from the mind. Pay attention with every part of your being. You'll get it on a different level. So we talked in our last session, and we hope Linda's all right with our drawing. So far, so good. Until we get into lettering, and then… <coughs> This is you. This is you, as we talked about before. It's represented by the circle with a dot in between, very simple, ancient uh, symbology, because it shows that you came from all that was, which does not exist anymore because it's changed. You came from all that was. You went outside of all that was. You, you developed your own unique identity, your soul expression. So this is you. It's consciousness. You are consciousness in a very, very unique way. Your consciousness draws in energy, neutral energy. So I'm going to put neutral energy here. question is, where did that where did that energy come from to begin with? Spirit wasn't energy. Spirit was, was, still is, absolute consciousness. Yes, us, you, us. How was it created? How, how did it come to be? Was it just sitting out there? No, because out there was just a big void. Important point to remember here. This is a Damas physics which do not usually agree with scientific physics. I have had my issues with others in the past about this. I've been driven out of, time, out of town a number of times. So the question is, where did, this, where did this energy come from in the first place? Good question. When you left home – I'm going to put home in a big cloud up here – you left home your own unique identity, your own consciousness. One of the first things you did was to separate, of course, from home. So you, I, I'm going to um, show this as um, a way of depicting it, but many different ways. But you basically separated yourself from spirit, original separation, the original seal. So you separated yourself from spirit, pulled yourself apart. Next you created what would be a what you could say a masculine feminine aspect of yourself and a light and a dark and a inward looking and an outward looking. You created separation of yourself in many different ways. It was brilliant because separation Diversity, division allowed you to see yourself, to know yourself, all in answer to the question that you asked, perhaps you shouldn't have, who am I? <laughs> who am I? Where am I? Why am I? All of these questions of the consciousness caused you to separate. You now had a yin and yang. You had the Mother, Father, light and dark, and all these different 
dualities within yourself. The moment a separation occurred, and to this day a moment separations do occur in a cosmic sense, it creates a desire to return, a desire to integrate back, a desire to become whole again. And that created energy. This desire to, yes, to experience yourself as masculine, feminine, light and dark, spirit, human, the, the desire to experience duality, to come to know yourself is grand, but there is a bigger desire and a bigger passion, and it's called come back together, be one again. Infuse or, or meld back who I am, because you can't stay. I get a little bit um, passionate about this, <laughs> because truth be known, there's not many humans on Earth who would, who could, who would listen, would listen to this, or would even understand it. Seems simple to you. Seems pretty simple. I've talked to other groups, other individuals, they don't get it. Uh, and that's fine, because that's where they are at the moment. They don't get it. So this is exciting. This illusion of separation uh, – that's an important factor – an illusion of separation – created such an intense energy where only consciousness had existed created the energy to bring you back home. That's how brilliant you are. Would you have separated yourself and not given yourself the tool to get back together? Would you have separated yourself and said, maybe I'll be lost forever? I don't think so. I don't think so. I know not. So that is where, that is where energy came from. Spirit basically did not know what energy was, had no clue, never heard of energy, didn't need energy. It was only when you left home, created or um, owned your own separate identity, your sovereignty, and then went out to experience yourself through the dynamics of duality or separation, that it created energy. It created energy. And that's what you've been working with ever since. So whew, now, so here you are as a consciousness being drawing energy into your reality. You draw that energy in as we as we showed in our diagram last month. You draw it in – you attract it. Uh, there is a law of attraction, but be careful, <laughs> because the law of attraction, as most people understand it right now, is very mental. Very mental. The true law of attraction comes and, – and the ability to create reality and to manifest comes from passion and desire. What are the original, what are the core passions and desires for any souled being? Tick tock, tick tock. To, to, um, to come back to yourself sooner or later. You'll never, ever, ever lose that, that connection. you never lose that. I know some of you worried or, or worry. What if I get lost? I, you really can't. You could go on for what appears to be the illusion of eternity being lost, but you can never you can never truly lose your connection with yourself, with returning. So the desire, the passion of the soul is to know thyself, express thyself, come back to thyself and evolve thyself into a, a consciousness and a reality unknown to self, 
up until this point. Those are the passions. If you want to look at the driving forces in your life, and I know so many of you get confused. Well, how come I can't create or manifest what I want? Well, you absolutely are. You absolutely are. No doubt about it. We say, yeah, yeah, but Adamas, that sucks. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. That's why you're here. Because, because you don't need it to suck your energy anymore. You need it to express your energy, and that's, that's why we're here. So the soul passion – look, feel your own soul passion for a moment. Uh, it's, that is what's causing your reality. It can be stated in many different ways. I just gave you four simple, basic statements of the soul's passion and desire. It could be stated in a lot of different ways, but it's to know thyself, to express thyself, to bring thyself together again, and to move thyself into levels never realized before. Uh, some of you might uh, call that the third circle sovereignty. Yes, yes, with a, with a twist, and the twist is new energy. By the way, remember Tobias talking about the masters coming back? There are hundreds and hundreds of masters back on the earth right now, have taken physical form, and they are becoming so connected with each and every one of you. If you're sitting in the chair here and saying, yes, but I'm new here, Adamus isn't talking to me, oh, yes, I am. If you're sitting here saying, but I'm not one of the um, the up-and-coming Shambra, I'm trailing behind here. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm addressing every one of you. Every one. So, now, those are, those are what's creating reality in your life, and that's what's causing certain things to manifest. I go back to our discussion last week at the New Year's celebration, and one of the dear Shambra came up to the front. Well, actually, I commanded her to come to the front. She wanted to sit in the chair. But the issue was, Adamus, what's going wrong in my life? I've lost my job. I've lost my relationship, my children, my self-esteem, my relationships with others, my career. It's all, it's all gone. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Do you stop, step back and take a look at your soul passion and desire, or your, your real – what's really creating your reality? It's not the things that you think. It's not, it's not those things. What's creating it is these, these deep inner movements of energy. And in Jennifer's case – I know you don't mind me mentioning your name. Well, too late if you did. But in Jennifer's case, the issue was she had to clear everything – she thought she had to clear everything out of her life, push everything away to get rid of uh, the humanness of her life. Uh, she had gotten into that trap before in other times, other lifetimes, of, of acquiring too much, too much power, too much money, too many relationships, and she said, never again. So be it. <laughs> so be it. She kept her beauty because it's a reminder to her that she's God also, but she was on the – is, was, was – on the verge of losing it, because even that, she felt, perhaps was the last thing standing in the way of really discovering these issues, the real passions of the soul. Shambra, you don't need to do it like that. You don't need to do it like that. And some of you have gone to extremes in, in – how you evolve yourself. We've gone to extremes thinking that the humanness is not part of the uh, spiritness, and, and it's not true at all. They, they – I'm going to go up to the front to make this statement – when you bring it back together, bring back the masculine, feminine, the light and the dark, when you return to yourself because of this tremendous flow of energy, you also bring your humanness and your spirit together. 
That, that is a duality that you've been allowing yourself to experience, as much as light and dark, masculine and feminine. You don't, you don't destroy your humanness to have your spiritness. You bring them together. They, they actually want to come together. There's parts of you that may not believe that, but they actually want to come together. So here we have the case with Jennifer actually being a brilliant creator, pushing everything out of her life and then coming up to the front and saying, what am I doing wrong? Absolutely nothing. You've created a type of void for yourself. You've, you've gotten rid of the, the noise and the, the clutter and everything else so that you can have this time with yourself, which perhaps is the scariest part of all, having to have time with yourself, having to, having to face yourself. Not because of anything bad that you've done, but having to f- – well, having come full circle and, and a part of you realizing it. The, the game is over. The game is done. The, the, the chase is done. That's, um, that's frightening, because a part of you says, well, then what next? What's going to happen? Part of you says, I, I was actually comfortable in some of those old human ways. But each and every one of you oh, – I'll get into it in a bit – but you're attracting energy over here to manifest, and I drew it as the squiggly lines manifesting before. Here we have your physical reality. I'm going to call this Earth. Oh. Also your physical reality here. And you're trying to you're trying to manifest and you're struggling with it right now. There's a lot of things, as we talked about in our last session, that interfere in this, in this stage here. First of all, sometimes your, your creations, your manifestations never make it to this reality, to right here, never make it to Earth. They're somewhere out here, and what we're going to focus on is how to get them here, if that's what you truly choose. There's a lot of confusion out there about, about how do you make it happen. About what what causes creation? What what's causing your reality, Roger? Emotion. Uh, um, emotion, yes. <coughs> I'm glad you didn't say my thoughts. Now, if we get into a very long discussion, but some of you, some of you say yes, but don't thoughts create reality? Not very well. Not very well. You've gotten, some of you, so afraid of your thoughts, so afraid to think things because you're afraid that it's – let's, let's think for a moment. Let's, let's think about cancer. You don't want to. No, because you might manifest it. If, if you were that powerful, why didn't you just think of a million dollars and manifest that? <laughs> what do you – do you only manifest negative things? No, no, no. Thoughts generally, uh, they're not very. It's a uh, the mind is a very the Calder's word. The mind is a very cheesy way of uh, <laughs> creating reality. Doesn't do it very well. You've all taken these courses in uh, mind control. Come on, you've taken courses in uh, affirmation, focused energies. They're all mental. All mental, and maybe some who strongly disagree, but that strongly disagreeing is mental also. <laughs> strongly disagreeing with me is generally not a winning proposition. <laughs> so you've taken these courses in thought. Uh, you've taken, you've read a lot about uh, um, things like um, the laws of attraction. Uh, yes, the laws of attraction are real when you're real, but so often those who are using these principles are into the thoughts. Thoughts, there, there, are, there is no creativity in the mind, none at all. Creativity doesn't come from the mind. The mind was never programmed, constructed, or designed by you to be creative. 
So it doesn't come from the mind. So, so there's a lot of discussion. Well, what, what then creates reality? Well, as, as I mentioned before, the driving forces are desire, passion, Joy and simplicity. Thank you. These things, these things create, they, they actually are creating a reality, but you're just not aware of it. These are, these are true uh, motivators or true, uh, the true dynamics behind creation of your reality. I'm going to ask, uh, perhaps we could open the door in the back. It's getting a little bit stuffy in here, and you're all going to pass out in just a minute. So let's get a bit of fresh air. So the, the false <coughs> motivators, the false dynamics, where a lot of people get very con – well, where you get confused, the ones that aren't working right now are force, Put false. Let's see, just over here. False. Force. Force. False. False. And the first one is force. So you have these these false motivators that again come from the mind, not from the true heart, and they are force. They are power. Power. And they are efforting. 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 Every one of you can recognize this because you have spent time, or perhaps still doing this, using force to create reality, using power to maintain your identity, to, to create reality, efforting. That is such a that is such a hypnotic overlay and such an old belief system, efforting. I, I again we, we talk at all levels most of the time. And there's still part of your humanness that believes it has to effort to to accomplish something. At the end of the day, you take a look at yourself and say, How much efforting did I do? And therefore, you give yourself a little grade. It was a good day, it was a bad day, based on the amount of effort expended. Well, it'd be like saying to the hamster on the wheel, How many miles did you go today? None. None at all. So these are old ways, very old ways of trying to create reality. It doesn't work very well. Because it's mental. Because it doesn't have desire, passion, and joy. Because it doesn't bring thyself back together. Because it doesn't allow for true expression and expansion. There's a very, very old energy ways of doing things. I'd just like to hold something. So. So here we are, trying to manifest, trying to bring things in here. Here you are on Earth as a human. <laughs> trying to bring energies in to your reality to cause, to create to manifest what you choose. It's not working very well, because you have focused up here. And it's, I'm speaking to all humans right now, because humans have focused up here. A variety of reasons. One we talked about last week. Massive <sighs> hypnosis. Massive hypnosis. It's been going on as long as I can remember to one degree or the other. Its origins truly go back to the time of Atlantis with the 
tampering with the mind, uh, with uh, trying to standardize uh, the mind, but <clears throat> it got into, got into a lot of other negative areas. It allowed the, mi- the human mind, which actually at one point was what you would say was uh, <coughs> a servant to the soul. Uh, in service is a very good thing, by the way. But the mind was in service to, to the, the divine within. With this tampering with the mind, it basically separated mind and divine. Uh, before, there, wasn't, there actually wasn't really a separation. But it caused a separation, and it caused the ability to ignore the divine, even though it's right there. To see yourself as human only, although your divine is right here. But it created this work on Atlantis backfired, and it created the illusion of of the mind versus the spirit. It actually it actually created this weird, strange phenomena called the search. Should have you write this. <laughs> in the now, this didn't happen all in one day. It's happened over hundreds of thousands of years in Atlantis. But in the work, in in the, the work on the mind, it created something called "Let's search for spirit. Hmm. Let's search for God or the answer or whatever." And that search has been programmed into the mind, programmed in, just like you'd program a computer to do certain things. It's been programmed in to constantly search, even though it's right there. Always has been, always will be. It also made the mind accessible from out to outside energies. Initially, the construct of the mind from the angels uh, made it so the mind was, was as sovereign and as unique and as impenetrable as your soul. Thank God you haven't tinkered with the soul. It is impenetrable by outside forces. In other words, it can never be taken over. It can never be stolen from you. You're the only one that can hide your soul from you. But anyway, so we have the mind was made accessible. In other words, in, influenceable, subject to influence. It's been that way for as long as we can remember. So here you have massive potentials of hypnotic overlays. The world is filled with them, some very deliberate and malicious, very intentional, some just because. Somebody's trying to sell you something, Uh, family members are trying to to keep you um, into the net, as I like to call it, the karmic, ancestral karmic net. It's tough to lose somebody from the your uh, ancestral background. You see you all travel together in groups. When somebody leaves, it feels like an assault or, or an insult on the others in the group. They don't like to see you leave. You want to really understand the people around you, your relatives, <coughs> the ones you've traveled with for eons of time? Leave. Leave. Now, I can, I can see the headlines now. Cult group tells everybody to leave their families. <coughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're not going to. Don't even say that word. It shows up in the searches then. Indeed. Indeed. And we need a little, we need a little PR. We need to get the, our energies flowing. Been hidden for too long. Trust yourself. So, uh, yes, leave, leaving your family. Now, I'm not saying pack your bags and leave the kids without their, their dinner tonight. What I'm saying is disconnect yourself from, uh, from those, because you can't love them 
the way it is right now, like you can really love them when you let go of your old bonds. I'm not saying to, I'm not saying to um, run away from home. I'm saying stay right there, but let go of the old, the old uh, identities. You, you, you've forgotten who they really are. You've forgotten why you came together with them in the first place, why you chose a journey of a thousand lifetimes with them. You've gotten so comfortable with them, complacent with them, that you just see them as a family member. You just see them as a piece of karma cheese. <laughs> and they're not. They're, they are so much grand, more grand and glorious when you disconnect, when you let go of uh, – let, let's just imagine that there's a, there's a cord that ties us together because we've had many, many lifetimes, and now we're so used to that pattern. When you let that cord go, I see you as who you really are, not as that family member I thought you were. So I know dear Linda gets a little nervous here, but actually most humans would understand this at some level. I understand for me. I just don't like the headlines. Mm. It, it, it's, you should start it's getting wonderful. used to it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, so, uh, dear Shambra, so let's get back to um, – we got off on a sidetrack here. So the hypnotic influences, we talked about this, we talked about this uh, recently at our New Year's gathering. Massive hypnotic influences all over the world right now, and they're, and they're affecting you. They're still part of the reason why you accept certain realities. The interesting thing is, in a moment, in a moment, you can let go of that by making a simple choice. You can make the choice to not let these outside hypnotic influences manage and dictate and control your life. But wait, before you make that choice, before you take that deep breath, what are you giving up? <laughs> Almost everything. <laughs> in a manner of speaking, a lot. Because it's been nice being in program mode, somebody else's program, not yours. It's been comfortable where you don't have to take a lot of responsibility for your life. It just happens. What, what is the expression that humans use? Good. Yes, it does. It Repeated? does. And wait, wait. What was the expression? Shit happens. Oh. And that's a way. That's a, I guess, a contemporary way of saying that uh, the the destiny has been rolled out before me. Therefore, I will walk that path. Shit happens. <laughs> Even though. Even though uh, there's not just one path of destiny, there are many. You'd have to take the responsibility of saying there is no, there is no destiny. You'd have to take the responsibility of choosing again, choosing things in your life. You'd have to take the responsibility of criticism from others, because they're going to. Why don't you do it this way? Your family telling you what's wrong with you, your coworkers uh, evaluating you. And you know, sometimes it's easier to stay in the box and just go along with it. So, so I would challenge a lot of you, not all, but a lot, that you've gotten lazy. You knew before we talked today that you could make a choice to get out of hypnosis, mass consciousness hypnosis. You've known it for years, but you haven't done anything, have you? Because first of all, you thought about it too much. You evaluated it. You tried to dissect it, uh, and, then, and then you fell flat on your face. You tried to say, well, what is hypnosis? How much is affecting me? If I let go, what will happen? What will replace it? You see, you've just gone mental. You've forgotten about this. So you don't do it. And here you are, here I am again, 
a messenger reminding messengers. And you don't have to endure it anymore. You can make a choice today, before you walk out that door, before you turn off your computers, that you're not going to accept it. And you know what? Because it will generally come from a place of alignment with your soul's desire and passion, joy and simplicity, it will therefore be. You rebalance yourself. You readjust your consciousness. Therefore, you draw in totally different supporting energies to create your reality, and you're no longer subject to hypnosis. You're free. But being free can be a little frightening. Ask anybody who's been in prison for 25 years or more. It can be frightening. So, dear, 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 dear Shambra, you are creating your reality. Tell me, Kathleen, what, what do you want? What do you want? <coughs> Microphone? Microphone, oh, ma'am? Oh, sorry, sorry. Sleep at the wheel. <laughs> Kathleen, what do you want? To joyfully express myself. Could you turn on her mic? Oh. <laughs> it's on. Wait, wait, they're turning it up. Okay. Right. To joyfully express myself. Joyfully express yourself. Okay, great. Lex, what do you want? Oh, sorry. At this moment, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what you get. <laughs> 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 Not so bad. Not so bad. Deb, Deb Fennessy, what do you Where's want? Deb? What do you want? Uh, whoa. Welcome back. Welcome back. Clarity. Clarity. Okay. So we have – we'll write these down for our viewing audience. We want clarity. We want nothing. We want joyful expression. Is that correct, Kathleen? Yeah. Joyful expression. And I'm going to put um, um, Calder's giving me uh, – yes, okay. I'm going to put <laughs> WTF behind that. Bear with me a moment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and um, Sart, what do you want? I need a new cook. <laughs> no, no, it's on. They have to make sure it's alive. Hello. I'd like a new car right now. I'm down to seven. New car. <laughs> New car. Only seven. I just want I want to take a moment for the sympathy of Shamber to come rushing into your life. <laughs> so okay, that, that's enough for now. So my contention is that uh, that Kathleen, no, you really don't want joyful expression. And my contention is, Lex, that you don't really want nothing. And my contention is, Deb, that you actually don't want clarity. You don't. And Sartre, you do want a new car. <laughs> <laughs> and I say this, and, and I'm, I'm glad that we can have fun together. But I say this because I want every one of you today – today, not tomorrow, but today – what do you want? What do you want, Ralph? A new life. What? A new life. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I would amend that to say a new life in the same uh, physical reality, <laughs> because I saw it coming your way, Ralph, and uh, it – so – but my contention is no. You don't want clarity? No, you don't really want nothing, actually. You and I talk a lot, and you have a list as long or longer than anybody else's. <laughs> and joyful expression. I don't know. I don't think so. 
Do you know why? Because if you really wanted these, you would have them right now. You are doing mental masturbation, or what you would call, if you don't mind me using a few uh, slang words, bullshit on yourselves. You say you want a new life. No, you don't. Mm. Otherwise, you would have it, Ralph. Otherwise, you would have it. You dream about it, a seductive dream. But if you really wanted it, you would have it. And for those of you who say you want enlightenment, I have a bit of sympathy with you for you enlightenment searchers, searchers, because you're so vulnerable to the programming, the searching. And how long have you been searching for enlightenment, and how long has it been right in front of you? But you're searching. So no, you really don't want it. You like to dream about it. You like to seduce yourself. You like to be seduced. You're playing a game, Deb, and all the rest of you. We had a talk. We had a, we had a very good talk, and it's been an interesting week since for both of us. And you've, you have gotten angry with me on many occasions recently. But it's waking something up within you, Dub, and it's making you say, I am that I am. And not just from, from the head, not just rote, but it's making you take a look at the games that humans play. You have to take a look at your own first. And as a result of this, dear Dub, the games, you're going to be the, a brilliant counselor, teacher, lecturer, the games that people play. And you're going to understand the sting of being addressed on the games. Everybody plays them. Everybody plays them. You're not the only one. You are one that's trying to get out. Where does the merry-go-round stop? Where do the games stop? And I give you credit for standing up. Part of you saying, no more. Part of you saying, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. If, if you really wanted it, and I'm talking about your health, I'm talking about those of you right now that are fading off into the next realm. They say, but oh, I must be different because I really want to live. No, you don't. Otherwise, you would be doing it. Harsh statement, strong statement, and a very true statement, because you are creators. And if you really wanted it, it would be happening. And for you to blame anybody else, anything else, from the water that you drink to the air that you breathe to the thoughts that are toxic on your being, for you to blame anyone else is a lie, is false. If you really wanted it, Bonnie, you would have it. You would. And all of you, you would have it. So don't tell me anymore when we have our long, long talks that you want something. Tell me how you're going to manifest it. Tell me how you're going to make it real. Tell me how it fits into the desire and the passion and the joy and the simplicity. I'm going to support you. We're all going to support you, and it will happen. It will happen. I bring all of this up, and how are we doing on time? It's only 4.20. You can talk for another 40 minutes before anybody gosh starts screaming. Hmm. I don't know if we'll need that long. But. I say all of this to you because there is an interesting phenomena happening right now. Could I have my balls, please? <laughs> How, both of them? Just one for right now. <laughs> hand asked, them to you? I asked, yes. I asked Linda to. <laughs> You're asking me to hand you balls? <laughs> I asked Linda yesterday to, um, to run to town to get a prop 
for our discussion today without giving her or Calder the benefit of the doubt of what we were going to do with my balls. It's a red ball. So there's an interesting phenomenon right now that's happening and um, bringing all of our discussion to a point here. There is this element of new energy ready to come in. Well, actually it's here right now. New energy is here. It's waiting. It, it, it's, it's real. It's not just a concept. It has been a concept for eons of time. It was prophesized one way or the other, called it the Second Coming. It was, it was, it's been talked about. It's been – you've come in, in in other lifetimes thinking that it was almost here, anticipating, getting ready, talking about new era, new times. It's here, right now, represented in my ball. Take another one. Now, pass the ball around, please. <coughs> Throw it around, if you would. Have a little fun with it. This is not a typical classroom. We're going to – going to get a little bit rowdy here. I have a lot of new energy balls. Yes, you do. Pa now pass it around, get, get familiar with it. So, dear Shambra. It is here right now. It is ready to come in. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? New energy – new energy is very different from the old energy. Old energy – old energy – see, new energy hurts sometimes. <laughs> It looks very innocent, but it does hurt when it collides with old energy beliefs. It, it can hurt. <sighs> old energy was created out of its desire, the soul's desire, to one day return back to itself. New energy is the result of returning back to self. Let's uh, settle down for just a moment, because I want you to <laughs> understand the point. Old energy was the result of this intense desire to return back to self, mm. to be whole again, to have a – what do you say – a process of fusion take place within self. When the process of fusion takes place, or begins to take place, I should say, begins to take place, you no longer have the need for, for the masculine, feminine, for the light, dark. You don't meld these two back together and come up with something that looks like this or, or whatever. You no longer have a separate masculine feminine, a separate light dark, a separate human spirit. You don't bring back the god and the goddess and then walk around with that duality. They disappear. They evaporate. The illusion absolutely goes away. You'll stop talking about bringing back the goddess energy. So, 70s. <laughs> You'll You'll stop talking about bringing light to the world, so social worker. <laughs> You'll stop talking about uh, this uh, going uh, to meet your higher self, because there is not a higher self. There's only you. Only you. You won't need to have this dualistic discussion philosophical debates, religions – oh, religions would – will cease to exist when you realize that there 
there is no separation. There is no salvation. There is no redemption. There is only awareness. So when these two come together and they no longer are two or four or ten, when there is no longer the need for light and dark, masculine, feminine, good, bad, that creates new energy. That creates new energy. It is different, obviously, than old energy. Old energy was the result of desire to return back to thyself. It was the rocket fuel that you were going to use to come back to you. When that process even begins occurring at the most minuscule level, it creates new energy. Where did you think new energy came from? God? God has no clue. <laughs> Truly, God is old energy. And no lightning bolts came down. Oh, there's a headline down. for you. <laughs> God has to be. God, by its nature, let's stop referring to God as him or her, but God, by thy nature, is old energy. You, because you are old energy. Therefore, God is old energy. Spirit. Spirit gave you this sovereignty. Spirit created its own separation. And what do you think is happening to Spirit right now? The fusion, the melding back into you. Spirit comes home to you. You don't go home to Spirit. Spirit doesn't exist anymore in the way you knew, in the way that was. Whew, let's take a deep breath together. I don't think this other group that I was thinking about would have – I don't think they would have understood all of this. I'm, I think they would be running back to the mountaintop for, for more meditation. You, you want to experience it. So, you know, spirit, spirit is old energy because it, it, you were conceived in old energy, therefore spirit is. But when you know thyself whole and complete, spirit is no longer old energy either. It's spirit. And you will always remember from where you came. Always remember the journey that brought you here. It's never forgotten. It's never, it's never erased. You remember with great joy every difficult, every wonderful moment of every life you have ever lived. And you'll wonder why you didn't let yourself remember along the way? Why, why you created separation? You're going to say, because I've heard it before, why didn't I give myself just one little morsel of remembrance? Because then it would have made the whole journey that much easier. Well, you actually have given yourself that morsel, maybe not a big enough morsel. New energy is created when you return to thyself, no longer separate, no longer in pieces, when you come back together, and it creates this thing called new energy. You'll still have old energy influences because for a while it's still going to be a big part of your life because it's in the world around you. It's in the aspects who haven't integrated yet. It's in some of the illusion and the beliefs of separation, it's still there. But you're going to have – thank you – you're going to have this thing called new energy into your life. It's here right now. I represent it as a, a red ball, crimson circle. <laughs> I represent it as something that you can hold and feel and touch for a moment. It's really not like this. Please don't start saying to everybody they have to have a red ball. 
I'm just using it to make a point here. A new energy is so different than old because it's not vibrational. Vibrational was the resistance of two parts uh, created reality. The two parts, again, masculine, feminine, good, bad, all the rest of that duality, vibrational. That created old energy. New energy is expansional. Every which way at the same time. Through time and space. New energy is not restricted, can't be restricted to the elements of time and space. It can be used in the context of time and space. In other words, now. It can be used, but I'm trying not to get too um, esoteric here, but it can't be confined. Don't don't try to confine the new energy that's in you, that's in your life. You're going to want to observe it. It's very, very different. It's going to seem odd and foreign. Remember Tobias's brilliant discussion about the, the four elements, the four marbles. Remember he talked about a light, a dark, and a neutral or white, representing duality. This new one came in, a clear, crystal clear marble element came in. What happens? The light and the dark, who have always hated each other and always been fighting and switching places, all of a sudden teamed up together. They tried to run that clear marble out of reality. They joined f odd, odd bedfellows for a short while. They joined forces. There's going to be times it feels like that for you, because part of you, right there, is not going to understand it. It's going to feel it's totally different and foreign, and there's going to be times where you confuse it with hypnosis. You're going to say, well, I'm feeling something different today. Linda's been saying that quite a bit. I'm feeling, isn't it an odd day? The mind is going to say, now is that the hypnosis that Adamus talked about, or is that new energy? Or, better yet, is Adamus hypnotizing us? <laughs> You're going to say it before the day is done, somebody will say it, or perhaps I already have. You know what? That's a very, very easy question to answer for yourself. It's your choice. It is your choice. Do you want it to be hypnosis, or do you want it to be new energy? By the way, any hypnotic influence is just energy. Just energy. If somebody is sending out uh, – I, I talked recently about the God Wars that are taking place in the not-so-refined heavens and the near-Earth realms, uh, these religions uh, battling it out, and they're also um, conveying or, or shooting their energies down here to Earth. A lot of hypnosis taking place right now. But it's just energy. You're not stupid. You're not, you're not incapable. Transmute that energy, or transmute that hypnosis into just energy to serve you, to help bring this into your reality. Y you can do that with anything. Hypnosis, um, um, people verbally or physically assaulting you. You can take you can take any energy and transmit it, even a gentle slap on the shoulder. It's just energy. David knows that. He breathes it in. It's no longer being hit. It's just energy. So back to the point. You've created new energy because you've contemplated and you've allowed coming back to yourself. That in itself has created new energy. It is yours. You have created it. It's very personal to you right now. But it will go out into the rest of creation, because you can never own what you create. You can use it. You can love it. You can have grand passion for your creations, but never own your creations. Sooner or later, 
they want expression in their own right. Sooner or later, it's, it's, uh, the energy has to flow. And the most beautiful thing from the original Creator, from Spirit, was giving you absolute divine will. I, I don't like the word free will, divine will. Go out and discover yourself. So, <clears throat> this new energy comes into, into your life. Wrap it up here. New energy is coming into your life. It looks different, it feels different, it smells different. It's you, though. It's you. That's the important thing. It's not coming from God. It's not coming from me. It's not coming from David the McMaster. It's yours. Observe it. Play with it. Get out of your mind. I, that's why I've been so emphatic in my discussions lately about feeling, about, about soul passion. Get out of the mind, because the mind is not going to understand it. That's why I've asked you to stop using words, because that is from the mind. And your relationship, your understanding of your new energy is not going to come from here. It's going to come from here. And it's going to be simple. There's going to be a tendency, because of programming and, and history, to, to want to dissect it and analyze it and describe it. Please do not. There's going to be a tendency to – some of you are going to get on the message board tonight and say, I've discovered new energy and here's what it's like. No. You don't want to try to describe it. You want to experience it. You don't want to try to tell the person next to you how to get theirs, because it's now going back into old energy dynamics. You don't want to be the first. It's not a race for new energy. In other words, you don't want that ego thing of, I got it before you got it, first one on the block. It is an absolute personal experience beyond words, sacred experience, a loving experience, what you would call a sexual experience. And I'm not talking from your reproductive organs. I'm talking about pure sexual experience. It's truly from the heart. When masculine and feminine fall back in love with each other and allow themselves Allow themselves to not have to maintain their identity, their separate identity. That's love. Okay. You may hold the ball. Oh, baby. So, dear Shambra, an integral element of new energy in your life – it's all around you right now, by the way. You've created it. She say, but how do I apply it? What do I do? What, uh, what do I need to do next? Well, breathe. That's a good one. <laughs> breathe. <coughs> new energy, your new energy, is timeless and spaceless. Now, many of you have pondered and, and actually done quite a bit of scientific as well as psychic research into time and space. Time and space. Fascinating, fascinating discussion. You – but it's wrong, because you're looking at time and space rather linear. You say, I should be – dear Tobias, or dear Adamus, dear any of us <laughs> – you say, isn't everything occurring all at the same time? No. No, not really. And you say, but shouldn't I be able to travel back in time? Shouldn't I be able to go back and affect myself in the past? Uh, that's mental and it's linear. Therefore, it's not going to work. You can transcend time and space, but not in the way you think. You say, I want to go off into the future to see what's going to happen. I want to go off ten years from now. I, I, want to, I want to know how the market is doing. Uh, oh, admit it, you do. 
You want to know what's going to happen. You, you can't get there from here because you're assuming linearity. You're still trying to be very human. New energy needs to be timeless and spaceless. It can't have the constrictions of linear existence. In other words, don't start planning. Don't create goals. Don't make assumptions of what's going to happen tomorrow. For true new, new energy uh, happens in this moment. This moment – I'm getting a bit esoteric here, but uh, – this moment is without time and space. This moment, any moment in your life, doesn't need time and space. It doesn't mean you're going to now experience everything that your soul is going to experience all at the same moment. It means that in the great words of Tobias, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In this moment, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't matter anymore. So much of the human journey has been created out of this, uh, out of this uh, driving need for linearity. In other words, What's going to happen tomorrow? When a, what I do today is going to determine tomorrow. <coughs> Out the door. You want to experience yourself. You want to experience your deepest self that really never was separated. It's in this moment. You're waiting for what? 2012. Not, not Chumbra. You're waiting until you finish that project, until you move to a different city, until a master comes and talks to you, until you lose some weight, until this or that, and wait and wait and wait and wait. That is – that will push off new energy, because new energy will wait also. The, the waiting game, or uh, I also call it the destiny game. I have to wait to see what's going to happen to me. I have to, I have to wait until I get this done. No more. No more. It's right now. I don't care how crazy you think you are, how many bad things that you've done, how many bad habits, how many failures. You know how many failures I had? Before I became a master? One. Just one. Just one. <laughs> As a true statement, because, uh, because uh, ultimately nothing is really a fit. My failure was – it took so damn long to figure my way out of my prison, my crystal. And the answer was there the whole time. But like some of you, I was playing that game. I was playing the game of how do I get out rather than rather than just doing it. But back on track. Now is the moment right now beyond time and space. Beyond any waiting, not right now. Right now to absolutely have that connection with yourself, bring new energy in to Go into the feelings and out of the mind. Don't wait another moment. It's right now. It's here. We're going to continue our discussions about work with new energy, but I'm going to um, in our in our next session. But I'm going to state a couple of things here. For the sake of our discussions, uh, which can tend to get very mental. I'm going to uh, ask your permission for. Ayadamas, some of those in the Crimson Council, and some of the masters who have come back to Earth to work with us in an underlying energy, on an underlying flow of consciousness 
to allow us to use both words and deal with some very dynamic um, consciousness or feelings. In other words, there's going to be things happening that are not said. There's going to be energies coming in that aren't just coming through Caldra's voice. We're going to we're going to bring in an entire river of consciousness to help you understand to, to help everybody understand as we get into some of these what could be very mental concepts to to help to support and facilitate you in not going mental not getting brainy about all this so we're going to ask your permission to do that or at least make you uh, aware that it is happening i do promise you that we will never use hypnotic techniques and never have. That's why sometimes, as we told a group, group recently, <clears throat> the message sometimes feels different. The message sometimes has you a little frustrated because you're used to getting a lot of sugar with your messages. <laughs> uh, hypnotic messages contain a lot of interesting seductive energies and that's what keeps you Post placed in front of that television for hours and hours, and you wonder why am I, why am I sitting here? That's that's what invites you back into games. That's what keeps you, at times connected to family, and ones who used to be your mates who are now divorced, and you say, but they're still in my life. Well, there's a hypnotic energy going on. We won't use that, and sometimes you wished we did, <laughs> but, but. There's no need to use that. And in going straight to the heart and the feeling with the messages, we don't want to use that. No need to. So we're going to continue our discussion about new energy. I ask you to continue your homework speaking to us without words, but now expand that to your pets and to the ones that you're living with or you're associated with. Speak without words. No manipulation. But I know you wouldn't anyway. Because speaking without words is going to get you back in touch with yourself. It's going to transcend the illusion of separation. The more you do it, the more rewarding it becomes and the easier we can communicate in groups like this. The easier we can come into some what would appear to be very complex messages – really aren't, but would appear to be complex – but we can carry forth our discussions. So it's a joy and an honor to be able to have these discussions with you, to be able to reach in that deep. I'm delighted in particular ah, – almost out of time – I'm delighted in particular that for the most part, we don't have to do a lot of processing anymore. It, it was good for a while. You, you needed that. You needed to know you are absolutely loved. But now we can do the work together. We can, we can have the joy and the experience of new energy, and that is what the soul desires. We'll gather together next month, but in the meantime we'll have our usual and frequent meetings on the New Earth and the other realms. Continue uh, – please, continue to journal your dreams. I know, Shambhar, you are so tough with the homework part, but I ask so little out of you. <laughs> <laughs> continue with journaling your dreams, writing down your dreams, because your dreams are not what you think they are. They are not just dreams. The, sim the way you interpret your dreams or the way they come into this reality is changing. You discounted them because they you thought they were just a crazy series of symbols, but the dreams are very real. Your way of understanding them is changing, and if you journal or you write down, you're going to discover very quickly how your dreams are really no different than your waking state. And you're going to start getting it when I say you become timeless and spaceless. That's what the masters, that's what the masters realize. Timeless, spaceless. Doesn't matter 
I am that I am. That's all that counts. <laughs> Next time when we get together for our Valentine's, pre-Valentine assembly, I would indeed ask each and every one of you to get a little bit dressed up, please. <laughs> It's not about looking like it's Sunday at the flea market. <laughs> Sunday so, at the flea market? <laughs> so, dear friends, please, for your homework next time, let's get a little bit dressed up, and I'll explain later why. With that, please know that all is well in all of creation. Therefore, you are God also, and I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain. And so it is. So it is.